There's an army, there's an army rising up. Come on, sing it with me this morning, church. There's an army rising up to break, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. There's an army, cause there's an army rising up. You believe God's raising up an army this morning? There's an army rising up. There's an army, there's an army rising up. There's an army to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. My God, my God. You know, on this morning, we're talking about from trial to triumph. Father, I pray for my precious brothers and sisters, our precious listeners that loves the word of God with all of their hearts, that love you, Jesus, that's truly committed to you. Bless them beyond measure. Speak to them minister to them. Teach them the word of the living God. We pray for wisdom. We pray for knowledge. We pray for understanding. We pray for revelation to the point that even a child would be able to understand the word of God that is preached from this broadcast this morning. Bless your people as we talk about from trial to trial in Jesus name. Amen. Now watch this. Good morning, my precious listeners. You know we love you guys, right? We really love spending time with you in the word of the living God. And we're talking about from trial to triumph. So I want to take you into the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning at verse 6, and we'll go straight down into verse 10. We just love teaching you the word of God. My dad was an assistant pastor of a Baptist church I was raised in, and my dad always drilled it into me after I answered the call of God. He said, son, whenever you stand behind the pulpit to preach God's word, don't bring your opinions, don't bring man's wisdom, preach the word of the living God just like it is. Amen? And so, ever since God called me into ministry, I followed my dad's example. To do what? Open my Bible and preach the word of God. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the living God. Now listen to verse 6, 1 Peter chapter 5. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due season. Humility, amen? It talks about submission. The hand of God is the fivefold ministry, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, amen? You have to submit to someone in the body of Christ. No one man is an island. And the Bible says when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he will, he will do it. He will exalt you in due season. He will promote you in due time. But it has to be God's time, not your time. Amen. God operates on his own timetable. We, we quote that scripture to you what, two days ago. And from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, to everything there's a time and purpose under heaven. Now watch this in verse 7, the Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all of your troubles, your problems, everything that frustrates you, that angers you. The Bible says, cast those things on the Lord. Why? Because he cares about you. The Bible says we have a priest who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Jesus knows what you are going through. And he wants you to talk to him about those troubles. But now we're coming into the meat of the word of God because I want you to see this. Now, then the Bible talks about this in verse 8. The apostle Peter said, be sober, be vigilant. It means to be alert. Be on your guard. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking 
whom he may devour. Now, the devil knows he cannot devour everybody, so he has to seek those who are weak, whom he may devour, because those who are strong, full of the word of God, full of the Holy Ghost, spending time with God in prayer, fasting, staying in church, staying in worship, being a witness of the Lord Jesus, those who are doing what God calls them to do and walking in obedience to the word of God, Satan will test them, but he knows he can't devour them. He knows he can't wipe them out and cost them to give up their relationship with God. Are you listening to me? Now listen to this. So Peter says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the word adversary there means opponent, one who opposes you at every single turn. Are you hearing me? No matter which direction you turn to, the devil will be there to oppose you. And of course, it comes in waves and it comes in seasons because when you resist the devil for a time period, he realized there ain't nothing he can do with you. So he will leave you like he did Jesus. He will leave you for a season because he has to go and regroup because he's getting his backside kicked because you are full of the Holy Ghost. You are full of the word of God. He bet or he bet God against Job that Job was going to curse God. And of course, God was the one who brought it up. The devil lost. You hear about the devil in chapter one, trying to really debate God as if he's wiser than God, which proves how foolish the devil is. Amen. If you think you're wiser than God, you are a fool. Amen. And of course, in chapter 42, Job did not, by the time you get to chapter 42, Job did not curse God. He did not turn his back on God. It, listen, if anything else, Job came forth as pure gold because Job prophesied it. Said, he knows the way that I take. That when he try me, I'm coming out as pure gold. So by the time you get to chapter 42, the Bible says, God gave Job twice as much as what he had before. He gave him double for his trouble after he passed God's test. And when you get into chapter 42, the devil is completely silent. He is somewhere in the woods hiding because he's disgraced. He is ashamed because Job overcame the devil. Are you hearing me? Praise God. And the same way Job went from trial to triumph, God is going to do the same thing in your life. Now listen, he says, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Don't you just love the word of God? Now watch this. That word devour means he wants to overwhelm you to the point of almost just giving up and running out on God, turning your back on God, cursing God and saying it ain't worth it. I've been listening, looking at some of the comments under the videos. Some people said, some, one lady said, I just feel as if as if my enemies have won. That's the biggest lie the devil ever tried to, to sell you, my dear sister. You better rebuke that lying devil because the word of God says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And of course, sometimes we feel this way because we get overwhelmed at what we are going through. But the word of God clearly says, Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you even unto the end. The Bible says in 1 John, up the five verse four. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And faith comes as we listen to the word of God. Another lady said, "Oh, I'm getting tired of hearing Pastor Sean preach." Well, I got it. I got news for you, sis. The Bible says if a man turns his air away from the word of God, even his prayer becomes an abomination unto God. I'm not gonna be a preacher that's gonna preach to tickle your air. I'm not trying to win the popularity contest. I'm trying to get you ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and I refuse to compromise the word of God. If the word of God is not manifesting, keep on hanging in there. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should have to repent. If God said it, he's going to make it good. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. But you are going to be tested. You are going to be tried. God is not going to promote you unless you're willing to go through the fire. Hello, somebody. You want promotion? You are going to be tested. You want God to trust you with more? You're going to go through the fire. Are you hearing me? The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. The Bible says if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. 
Hello, somebody. Are you listening to me? Now watch this, because I got good news for you that are going through and feel like giving up. I'm not beating down on you. I, w- I want to talk strong to you because the Bible says all, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We are in spiritual warfare. We are engaged with an enemy who is out to kill us. This is not some flowery bed of ease journey. This is warfare. This is life or death. Are you hearing me? Now watch this. Verse 9, the Bible says, Whom you got to resist the devil, resist him being steadfast in the faith, knowing, watch this now, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, which means that your brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who are genuinely saved, full of the Holy Ghost, love God with all their hearts, walking in obedience to the word, they're going through the same thing you're going through. Don't let the devil deceive you for a second and make you think, oh, Paul, me, I'm the only one going through this. You ain't that special. I want you to hear me good. This ain't about you. This is about Christ and him crucified. You ain't the first one to go through it and you ain't gonna be the last one to go through it and this won't be the last time you go through trouble but you got to realize that in the fire just like Jesus showed up with Shadrach Meshach and Abednego he will be in the fire with you he said to the point that the scent of smoke would not even come on you when you pass through the waters I'll be with you when you go through the rivers they'll not overflow you when you go through the fire you'll not be burned because I am your God. I am with you. My God, somebody help me give him praise here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now I want to finish teach. My God, I felt it just now. Now watch this. Verse 10 says, now watch this. But the God of all grace, he's the God of all favor, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while. You see that? Most people don't want to deal with, this is where Christians get defeated. When they're dealing with the suffering, I've been there. I know what it is to want to throw the towel in. I know what it is to be broke. I know what it is to have car repossessed. I know what it is to lose a house and wondering where in the world is the next meal or the next dime is going to come from. But David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. The apostle Paul said, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to riches, to his riches and glory. He'll rain manna from out of heaven if he have to. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. He'll open the Red Sea. He'll knock down Jericho walls. He'll dry up the Jordan River. He'll come walking out to you at three in the morning on top of the storm to deliver you, to rescue you, to bring you out. You are about to go from trial to triumph, but the best way to get through it is to just go through it. David said, even though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. No as David said, I'm going through it. If you're going through something, you coming out to the other side. Somebody shout, yes. I'm getting ready to go from trial to triumph. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that's in you. No weapon that's formed against you will be able to prosper. When the enemy comes against you like a flood, the spirit of the living God will raise up a standard against him. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. You getting ready to go from trial to triumph. Someone shout yes. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Now watch this. So he said in verse 10, But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. Listen to what he's going to do. He is going to make you perfect. The word perfect means to complete. That's what first. That's what Philippians 1, 6 says. He who has begun a good work in you, he will complete it. That word perfect right there also means to equip. It means to repair or to cause you to recover all or to restore. It means to make one what he ought to be. So he's going to make you perfect. 
This after you suffer now, because there's a purpose for your pain. No pain, no gain. Watch this. After he makes you perfect, he is going to establish you. The word establish means to make stable, to set fast, to place firm you. He is going to firm you up, my friend. You'll be able to stand through and go through anything after you pass this test. And then the Bible says he is going to strengthen you to make one strong, to confirm one in spiritual knowledge and power. And then he is going to sell you, which means that he is going to lay a strong foundation and then he is going to wreck you. He is going to raise you up up. Are you listening to me on this morning? Don't we serve a good God? You are about to go from trial to triumph. I pray that God would touch you. I pray that God would strengthen you. Just pray this prayer after me. Somebody needs to get saved and I feel it. All the Jesus, all the, all the Jesus I surrender. You listening to this broadcast this morning. There won't be no triumph for you my friend unless you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't overcome sin on your own. You can't overcome the devil on your own. I, 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 I can hear you saying, well, after I get this thing right, then I'm going to surrender to Jesus. No, you can't get it right without God. If you can get it right without God, Christ's death is in vain. You can't do this without him. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And he is opening his arms wide to you this morning. Your first step from trial to triumph is to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus loves you this morning. He cares about everything that you are going through. He wants to help you, but he's asking you to take the first step and surrender your life to him without any hesitation, without any procrastination or debate. Just pray after me right now. Say to loose that person right now. You will not hinder them from getting saved. Take your hands from off of their spirit, soul, mind, body, and emotions. Loose them in the name of Jesus. Now pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the son of the living God. Jesus, you died on Calvary cross and shed your precious blood that I might be saved. Forgive me of all of my sins. I'm convinced you are the son of God. You died on the cross, but God raised you from the dead on the third day. Jesus. I believe and I receive you into my life as Lord and Savior. Listen here, friend. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, me and Pastor Amy want to be the first ones to welcome you into God's precious family. You are now a part of the body of Christ and we are here to pray for you. We are here to encourage you. We want to say to you, congratulations. You are now a child of God. The angels are assigned to you. You are a part of God's kingdom. God's got your back from this day forward. Listen, you may make mistakes, but he is ready to forgive you. It's not a license to sin, but stay in church. Get in a good Bible, believe in Holy Ghost filled church who loves God with all of their heart, who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Go and tell the pastor, I've given my heart to Jesus. I want to be a part of this church. Welcome into God's family. We love you guys. We believe in you. And I'm so happy you made that, that decision to accept him as Lord. That's the most important decision that you will ever make. Continue to listen to these broadcasts. Get you a good Bible. Put a good Bible app on that phone. Or buy you a physical Bible. And as we preach the word of God, follow along with us. Pause the pause the video if you have to so you can catch up with us we want to teach you we want to equip you we are going to lead you all the way into heaven are you hearing me jesus said i am the way i am the truth and i am the light he loves you and he is smiling heaven is rejoicing because of your decision on this morning type under this video pastor sean i've just surrendered my life to the lord jesus heaven is throwing a party right now they are going wild over your decision. 
to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. You can't do it without him. Stare on good Holy Ghost filled Christians who love God, who got integrity. Listen, remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell, click on the red and white button, subscribe. So every time we go live, every time we upload a new video, you'd be notified. We want to keep bringing the word of God to you. Amen. And to you Christians that's listening to this broadcast, subscribe. We'd love to have you a part of our YouTube channel. Amen. If you're watching us through Facebook, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. Share these broadcasts with, with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, WhatsApp. Send this message to somebody who is about to go from trial to trial. You know we believe in you and we know you guys believe in us. And we are asking you, sow a seed into this ministry. Send a donation into the ministry. Give an offering into this ministry. Support God's work in our lives. We are preaching the real true gospel of the Lord Jesus. We are here to glorify him. We are here to lift Jesus high. Amen. Because he said, if I be lifted up from this earth, I'll draw all men unto me. We love you guys. And we look forward to being with you again on tomorrow morning. God bless you. And remember, you are going from trial to trial. God bless you. Bye-bye.